What's up everybody, it's me Mark Robertson and today we're going to be talking about uh, two weeks past the DeMarcus Cousins trade and how each the Kings and the Pelicans are doing since. Um, so since 2010 the Sacramento Kings had had trouble with their ownership, their front office, and their um, head coach, head coaching, and a big part of that was when they took DeMarcus Cousins in the Two thousand in the fifth pick of the two thousand ten draft, um, it was he came in and people knew that he was gonna be like he had attitude still like attitude from college and he had a persona coming in and we could all see it through the years and getting just continuous amounts of technicals and I guess the front so Vladi Divac obviously made the decision that he's just wants to change the culture his words culture um, and so. He, the the Kings made a trade uh, where they traded DeMarcus Cousins and Omri Caspi to the New, or uh, New, Orleans, Pel or New, Orleans, New Orleans Pelicans um, for uh, Buddy Heald, Tyreek Evans, Langston Galloway, a uh, first round top three protected uh, 2017 pick and a second round uh, 2017 pick the uh, top three protected is if they land in the top three we don't get or the kings don't get the pick if they if they don't land in the top three we get the pick so it's pretty good for us um they also uh the kings also made the move where they waived uh matt barnes so they could sign all three of the so they could have uh all three of the uh the draft the traded players uh on their roster um so Tyreek and Langston Galloway made it obviously Buddy Heald made it um but yeah uh ever since the trade um both teams have been looked have been looking pretty bad um it's it's because both teams are just basically new to each other even though people are all excited because they get to see a front court of DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis have only played together for seven games Technically eight, if you want to call it the All Star game, um, but yeah, seven games is a long time, especially one of those being a game that he was suspended. So only six games together. Um, but uh, the Kings are currently one in five since the Demarcus trade. They are twenty five and twenty or twenty five and thirty eight um, in regular season record, um, and they're twelfth in the conference. Um, and the Pelicans are two and five. Uh, since acquiring Demarcus, and they are twenty five and thirty nine, uh, which makes them thirteenth in the Western Conference. And ever since uh, uh, getting traded to the Pelicans, Demarcus has been averaging twenty one point seven points, fourteen rebounds, and a three point eight assists on forty four point three field goal shooting and. Uh, twenty eight point six three point shooting. So, obviously, his field goal shooting has gone down. His three point shooting's gone down a lot because it was thirty six with Sacramento. Um, because he's not the he's not the main scorer anymore. It's more him and Anthony Davis. So they have to get used to like making up plays for him and Anthony Davis. I think a really good play, even though I don't really like the Pelicans. Uh, a really good play would be if Anthony Davis got down in the post and he got double teamed. And he threw out to Demarcus that was on the that he was either in the corner or at the top of the key and he could pop a three from there and nobody'd be guarding him. So because Demarcus makes wide open threes pretty uh consistently. Um one thing is uh Demarcus did get his eighteenth technical. Like I said, he did get suspended for one game after getting his eighteenth technical in a double technical situation with Steven Adams during the Thunder game at the and the funny thing is it's the first twenty eight seconds of the game. You can't even go like three minutes if I get any technical. Um, but who knows? Um, so yeah, he did miss one game. So <laughs> surprisingly, that was one game that, that was one of the two games that the Pelicans won. Um, the other one was against the Lakers, but then they got, they got, they lost by five against the Jazz the next night. Um, so moving on to the players that, that the Kings acquired, uh, Buddy Heald has looked great. Um, obviously it's a little bit harder with the fact that um, it's harder for people to look at past the fact that he's averaging 4.4 .4 turnovers, but it's, to be fair, he's a rookie coming out of, coming out of college. Um, probably the off season, one of the biggest things that he'll be, uh, he'll be focusing on is his ball handling. 
um, just making sure he can make better passes and better de- decision making. Because even though he's a shooting guard, you still got to be able to make passes. Even you look at James Harden; he went from shooting guard to point guard over basically overnight, and he's averaging like eight, eight, nine assists, right? Um, <clears throat> and then he's also averaging three point or three rebounds and point seven assists to go along with an amazing fifty two point eight field goal shooting and forty eight from the three ball. Fantastic! That's it looks good. You get Buddy Heald open for an open three or like even a, a semi contested three, he's gonna make it. Uh, you get him into the you get you get him a pick and roll into the lane and step back and he's gonna make it. Uh, that kid can drive. He can do it. He can do a lot of things on the uh, on the offensive end. He's pretty good on defense too. Um, he gets he got like two steals against Denver, I think. Um, but. Yeah, it'll develop over time. He'll be great. I, I, I'm going to give him like three, two, three seasons. And that kid will be pretty good. Like like Bradley Beal good. Not Steph Curry good. Bradley Beal good. I, 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 I see it. Um, the next person I'm pretty surprised about is Tyreek. Tyreek Evans, we got him back after he had a pretty good, he had his rookie season with us and he was rookie of the year, so um, I'm glad to honestly. I'm glad to see him back. He he's happy to be back. He's in Sacramento. It's where he started his career. Um, surprising, surprisingly, after coming off that big knee surgery, he's averaging thirteen point two re or thirteen point two points, five rebounds, two point four assists, on forty five point one uh, field goal shooting and. 52.9 three-point shot. His three-point shot, he... I don't know how he does it. He just walks up, and he's like... And if someone has his hand, he's like, he's like I'm just going to pop it. It's the smoothest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, which, I remember a lot of people saying that Tyreek didn't have a jump shot, but, hey, um, he still drives to the basket. Um, it's a little bit harder for him to catch up in speed because he's still getting over his knee. Um, cause like he had to rest, uh, during the, during the, uh, during the jazz game, he had to rest and then he played against the Denver Nuggets the next night. Cause I guess there's something with his condition where he can't, uh, play back to back games, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, he's looking good. Um, honestly, I would like for the Kings to give him a, like a two year contract, at the end of the year, like maybe a one year with a player option, uh, just because we could use a backup small forward, backup shooting guard, or well, backup small forward, because um, if God if God help us, we get Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum starts, and then we have Tyreek off the bench scoring thirteen. Jason Tatum projected he's scoring sixteen, so <laughs> yeah, that would still be pretty good. Um, that part the second part of the Kings uh part of the trade to New Orleans was Omri Caspi in his first game he had like 12 points and then broke his right thumb and got waived for and because it was a four to six injury and they couldn't wait that long so they signed a 10 year or ten, not 10 year <laughs> 10 year contract that's a really long contract <laughs> um a 10 year um 10 oh 10 I said 10 year again did I really say 10 year again a uh, 10-day contract with New Orleans, and they signed Reggie Williams to that 10-day contract, and he was in the D-League, so pretty pretty decent player, you add, um, I would say so myself. And then Langston Galloway, he hasn't been really seeing consistent minutes. He comes out, like, in garbage time and, like, can, like, get some rebounds, but, like, that's pretty much it. Um, so placement, um, draft-wise... Right now, the right now the Pelicans hold the sixth pick and the Kings hold the seventh pick. So the Kings are good for not having to switch to the Bulls or uh, swap to the or give it to the Bulls. And the um, and the Pelicans are good for not or and the Kings are also good for not having to give the pick back to New Orleans because they're not in the top three right now. Right now, obviously we're gonna get they're gonna get so lucky that they get the first pick. Um, but yeah. Um, Honestly, 
Dennis Smith is still in this is, is still in our in our in our wake at that time. You pick that you pick him up. Pick him just just put him right in the jet. Fly him straight to Sacramento. Don't let him interview anybody. Just go straight to Sacramento. We we want you to be there now. Um, but yeah, Dennis Smith is good. Like the only thing he needs to work on is his shooting, and that's pretty much it. Um, he has really good ball handling. He has really good uh, playmaking. He's a good all around player. Um, he's been reviewed as is like a Damian Lillard without the three ball. Um, I still think that you give a kid a little bit of time, he can make it. He can make a solid three ball. Maybe like maybe not the most solid, but like still could shoot pretty well. Um, and then obviously get Jason Tatum. If Jason Tatum is still there at the seven pick, you pick Jason Tatum up. We need a wing player. I don't honestly, even though he already agreed that he wasn't, or he already said he was going to come back after coming off of an Achilles. I think Rudy Gay will come back. I think he'll. I think he'll opt in because nobody's going to really go f- want to get. Somebody who just came off an Achilles with a max contract. Like, I guess it, can, it happened to um, Wesley Matthews, but I, I don't know. Um, Willie and Scow. Uh, it's good to talk about Willie and Scow in this situation with how it happened with the Kings. Um, they, uh, they're getting a lot of good minutes. Willie's getting that 29-ish minutes because Marcus is no longer there, so Willie's starting at power forward. And then Scal's coming off the bench at backup power forward with 14.4, and he's averaging, like, 12 points. So that kid's fadeaway is awesome. And then when he gets put back, don't like that win over Mason Plumley. Whoo! Oh, oh, we got a future point. We got a future power forward, boys and girls. <laughs> um, and then it's good to see Kufus getting in some scoring in there. Um, it's always fun seeing his, uh, his half hooks and his... Uh, how far he can half hook something? He probably could half co- half hook something from half court if, he, if we needed him to. Um, and then he's also got that running that running floater. The the one was that was that against the Jazz? He had a really cool running floater. Like it was like a good fifteen feet from the the hoop. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said. Dennis Smith and Jason Tatum would be my two picks for those two picks in the draft. If we couldn't get any of the top three point guards, I would say Jason Tatum and then uh, Frank Nilikina, Nilikina? The, Fr- the French point guard. That kid, that kid looks really good. Like he just needs to imp- like just like Dennis Smith, he just needs to improve on his shooting, and he's fantastic. He's a great, I mean, great player. He can even he's. Pretty athletic too, um, and then so for my videos, um, I'm gonna be doing this thing called Pick of the Day uh, for every one of my videos, and it's just through DraftKings. I'm not not supported by DraftKings at all, um, but I, it's something fun. Um, my pick of the day, and it is March the seventh of 2017, and I pick Russell Westbrook. They play the um, the Trailblazers tonight. And I still want the tra- I want the Trailblazers to win because they uh, I want them to go I want other teams to go up so they lose their picks. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, Russell Westbrook is Mister Triple Double, Mister. I still think he's gonna be MVP even though everyone thinks that James Harden is basically leading a championship team. Um, but hey, we'll see what happens, right? Well, uh, thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and leave an assist down in the comments if you uh, if you want me to or if you want to know more. And uh, go ahead and uh, dunk on that like button and uh, hit that subscribe button for more basketball content. And I'll see you guys later. Peace, hoop fans.